what would you do if you woke up today with memories that don't belong to you? A skill you never learned. A past that was never yours, yet somehow it feels like yours. In this video, we'll explore real documented cases that challenge everything we know about our memory. Stories that suggest our memories might not be locked inside the brain at all, but connected to something far larger than human mind. In 1994, Tony Sisoria, a New York orthopedic surgeon, was struck by a lightning. He survived, but what happened to his brain to this day remains a scientific mystery. It was a warm summer afternoon. Tony was at a lakeside pavilion in upstate New York attending a family gathering. He stepped away for a moment to make a quick call from a nearby payphone. As he hung up and turned to leave, a bolt of lightning struck the booth. The surge threw him to the ground. In that instant, everything went dark. He later described the sensation of rising, floating above his own body, before being slammed back into it, and when he opened his eyes, people were rushing to his side. His skin was burnt. His body was in shock, but he was alive. Within days, his wounds began to heal. His life seemed to return to normal. Except it hadn't. About a week later, Tony developed an overwhelming craving, an obsession with piano music. It was strange because he had never been musical before. Yet, within few months, he wasn't just playing. He was composing music that should have taken a lifetime to learn. As if he had tapped into a memory he could never reach before. Neurologists called it acquired savant syndrome, a label for something they still can't explain. They say it's an extremely rare phenomenon when, after brain trauma, a person suddenly develops extraordinary abilities in music, art, mathematics, even memory. Skills that were never there before, yet somehow emerge overnight. But it leaves a haunting question. What if our memories aren't tied to the brain alone? What if the reason science still can't pinpoint a specific place where memories are stored is because they're not kept in the brain at all, only transmitted to it from somewhere else? Now, it may sound like science fiction, but the strange thing is, this isn't an isolated anomaly. All over the world, thousands of children have spoken of memories that never belonged to them, yet were later proven to be real. Over decades, Dr. Ian Stevenson and later Dr. Jim Tucker at University of Virginia investigated more than 2,500 children who seemed to remember lives that weren't their own. And not just hazy dreams, but real names, towns, even the way someone died, unexplained memories that were later proven true. A boy named Titu Singh from a small village of Bad in India described in detail a life of a man from a nearby village who had been murdered. And somehow, led the family straight to the killer. In the United States, a young boy named James Leninger spoke vividly about being a World War II pilot. He named the aircraft, the ship, even fellow soldiers, details that investigators later verified as true. For children themselves, these memories don't feel like imagination. They feel real recalled with the same clarity and weight as their own experiences. The mystery is undeniable. If memory is only tied to personal experience, 
how can we tap into information that has never been there before? Skeptics, of course, dismiss it as a coincidence. Fragments picked up unconsciously, pieced together by chance. But the precision, the emotional weight, makes them difficult to dismiss. And if even a handful of these cases are real, then perhaps memory is not confined to a single brain, but exists in a shared field, a vast reservoir of information, one that, in rare moments, any of us can tap into. And if memory can be shared between us all, then maybe our lives aren't as separate as we think. Maybe each of us is just a fragment of the same much larger system. Strangely, physics has been whispering the same truth for decades, that nothing in our universe is ever truly separate. Everything you see and everything you don't, even the air around you, is made of the same fundamental material you're made of. Nothing is truly disconnected. And if nature itself is a connected system, then perhaps memory isn't a private function of the brain, but part of a larger network that surrounds us all. We already see hints of this in the natural world. Birds migrate across thousands of miles, returning to the same nesting grounds with a precision science still struggles to explain. Fungal networks beneath forests link trees together, passing nutrients and signals as if the forest itself were a single organism. And in physics, quantum entanglement suggests that particles remain linked across vast distances, able to exchange information instantly, as though the space itself were part of the connection. Some scientists even describe reality itself as an information field, a kind of cosmic web where nothing is ever lost. In a way, it begins to resemble how information works inside a network or a computer, where nothing is truly separate and everything exists within one vast field of shared memory, which leaves us with a haunting possibility. Perhaps memory is not something we own at all. Perhaps it belongs to the system itself, a vast field where every thought, every experience, every life is stored. And what we call our memory is only part we're allowed to touch. Hi, thank you so much for sticking around until the end. If you're ready to go even deeper, I would recommend to watch this video next. But be warned, because once you see it, reality will never look the same again. And if you would like to help me keep creating stories like this, you can now join the Circle of Observers and support the channel on Patreon. So I'm going to leave the link to Patreon in the description below. And if you like finding out about different anomalies and facts just like these, then you can also join the Beyond Meaning email list where I share exclusive hidden anomalies and strange facts that I discover during my research which don't really fit the videos that I release here on YouTube. So again, there's a link in the description if you would like to sign up. And if you enjoyed this video, again, please leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And for now, that's it from me. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care.